Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Meaty69, and we are back with Replays of the Week Part 2. Um, again, slightly different to my usual as I am commentating. Um, it will be a one weekend. I said that yesterday, it'll be a one off, but I've changed it into a, a one weekend off. Reason being is I have had so many replays, and especially today's one, I have put replays in taken one out got another one had to take another one out so it's been very hard because i've had so many good replays and i'm not able to feature everyone so i am sorry if you don't make uh, the replays um but i'm just you'll see by these battles today it's i've got a couple of kolobanovs in here i've got an almost eight thousand battle and i've got a replay from pretty much the best player in what blitz not just eu but i believe in what blitz in all across all servers so i will be doing uh monday replays just for this week because i do go away on tuesday so monday i can't really have time monday to to get a video going so i'm just going to use some of the extra replays that i've got or the extra replays that i was going to send uh, today but i've had to take out so i will do replays on on monday uh and that will be my last video until i am back from holiday so first up let's get to it we have got four replays for you uh the first one is osh's um in his e4 and already he has done a little bit of damage while i have been talking he's now got the t54 e1 he's got the death star there so with a high roll the death star can probably Hesh him up from his bottom plate, or maybe he's Capola, but Osh knows he's there, and he was trying to wiggle and angle the best he can, and he did manage to get the bounce. So it is already four against five. Still a lot of work to do. There is a couple of tanks that are low hit points. Uh, you got the E T fifty four E one coming up. Does get one shot into Osh's, but Osh's does manage to take him out for his second kill. But that one shot could be vital because as i say that he could have been a one shot to that death star but the e50 has now taken out the death star and now oshes has got the t62 to his left so he's going to get a bit of gun depression or get a bit of elevation shall i say and luckily the e50m did shoot him uh, once before uh, not e50m sorry the e50 did shoot him once which left him on a one shot so now it is three against two oshes is not quite a one shot to these guys. He does get a HE roll into that waffle, but now he has, he is only on 178 HP. So his team are coming, so he doesn't need to rush. There is a couple of tanks coming. The STI is going across, yellowing down, but it's a good thing for Osh's because both of these tanks are both looking at the STI. And then here comes the Death Star. Does he take out? Does a low roll there, leaving the E100 on 8 HP, and which now just leaves this waffle. So I'm not sure if Osh's, yes, Osh's will get the kill. HE in his face for his fourth kill. So a great battle there. Seemed pretty easy, made it look easy, and he did finish on 7.1k damage. Mastery, top gun, high caliber, uh, and he earned. 5,000 credits, so a nice carry there, 1,620 XP, so a very nice carry from Osh's. Next up, we have Salty Tanker, a good friend of mine, and again, as yesterday, I posted an Object 704. Um, we have another Object 704 in this, and again, this was a monster carry, and it was a battle that they do win, but they shouldn't have really won it. So mm -hmm. moving up, we ha he's going right. His two mate scanner is spotting in mm -hmm. the middle. Um, he is in the back chat, so he does spot a few of the enemy already. Um, Salty just sits back. He's aiming down that middle there where a few heavies does poke out usually. Um, and a couple of tanks are now to the right. So the back chat is getting destroyed up there in the middle. So he needs to be careful and Salty hasn't really got any shots available. So he tries relocating a little bit just to get some something available and 
we have the Chieftain, uh, not the Chieftain, sorry, there with the Centurion, 7 and 1, but he does miss. Uh, the enemy have now caught Cap A, um, and he still hasn't got any damage yet, but they're pushing up. Did he get any shots? No, the M103 is there. They are now a tank down. So you've got two tanks there. Centurion pushes it again, and he does get a nice shot into him, putting him down to a one shot. However, he did get a shot in return. Um, and now they're just waiting. We've got the IS-3 there. Unfortunately, doesn't get a shot, but yes, he does. The IS-3 kindly pokes forward again, and scan, uh, not scanner, scanner is the uh, batch up. Uh, salty tanker does get a nice shot into him now he's backing up he's got three tanks now to his right we've got the t44 there does poke a little bit forward and he gets a nice roll into him leaving him on a one shot so it is now five against six uh salty tanker's got this kv4 with him and it's pretty much just him in this kv4 and fair play to the kv4 he does help out and he does take the attention of pretty much all the enemy up here so you've got the is8 now a lovely roll of 800 damage maximum roll there we did see a maximum roll yesterday's uh, in the object 704 uh so now that's putting him put that is8 down to a one shot so scanner in the back chat is now dead uh the is8 is now dead on his team on on the enemy team so it is three against five so still a lot of work to do However, there is two or three tanks that is just a one shot. So the T-54 now pokes forward, gets one shot into the side of him, and the KV-4 gets one shot into him as well, leaving him on just under 700. So a high roll, he could be a one shot, but that is a mega high roll. Uh, well, not mega high roll, but a decent high roll, and he does manage to, to pull it off. So it is now two against four, and you can see the Centurion he rages i hope wargaming does see this because players like this deserve to be banned he deserves to be banned he f your mother etc etc there is no need for it and i'm glad they played how they have i'm glad salty tanker uh plays how he is because He's going to make that Centurion eat his own words. So now he's focusing on that M103 and it got a crazy shot into that top hatch. Uh, very nice shot there. Very, very nice. Considering he was moving as well. And he manages to take him out. So it is now two against three. He has got the Centurion behind him. So the Centurion with the Hesh. He is getting Heshed up. And now he is a one shot. So he does need to focus then some, this Centurion. Luckily, he gets a bounce there. He's got the HE loaded just for 100% uh, certain he'll take him out. And he gets him and he does take him out very nicely. So it is now two against two. So we've got this T-44 who is a one shot. And there is another tank that luckily for them is AFK. So they've got one cap each. The enemy are leading on cap points. So they do even need to take out a tank and possibly cap A, which is there to stop the enemy getting any more points. So the KV-4 is going around, taking the attention just before the T-44 looks at Salty. He does manage to take him out. So it is now two against one. Salty's got five kills to his name. He's just been told that the last tank is AFK. So he is going to want the, the, last, the last kill. So the KV-4... As I said earlier, fair play to him. He did well in uh, supporting Salty Tanker. And Salty now moves forward. He knows the tank's AFK. Doesn't need two people to cap. Uh, as long as they're in the cap, the enemy are not getting any points. So he's going to push forward. He's going to get the spot. And now, as you can see, it is the Carnivon. KV-4 gets one shot into him. Salty gets one shot into him. And luckily for Salty... Uh, the KV-4 does reload first, but you can just see he bounces, which leaves maximum damage for Salty. So very, very, very well played from Salty. Six kills, 640, 940 supremacy points, and again, an amazing battle. And he finishes on 6.7k damage. Top gun, high caliber, pulls medal. He got the lot. 40,000 credits earned, which is a great amount of credits. Um... 
1782 XP. So very well played, Salty. And thank you for sending that in. Now, moving on to the third battle. We have the WZ121. And it is driven, as I said at the beginning of, of the, the video, by one of the best players I know. And I've known him quite well. And I've known him a long time. And it is my man, Zenodium. And he drives this. And if you want to learn how to play the game or how to play certain tanks, then Zenodium is the best person to watch. Uh, he just knows everything about the game. Now, he knows this one to one hasn't got great gun depression. So you can see what he's doing here. He's driving up the hill, sort of half backwards, half sideways, just to get the gun depression that he needs. And he does get a shot into the FV4202. He's just take one shot into the, the VK. And this gun has uh, this tank has got an amazing turret. So he's going to use that to his advantage. And this is a perfect map for that. Uh, gets one shot into the E75. And now we got the object 704. And he was supposed to shoot him. But thankfully the FV4202 gets in the way of that shot. And takes the shot for him. Uh, and again, he's focusing on the tanks that he can he can see. He now knows that there is an object 140 to, to the left. And he's using that minimap. And he's getting into position so the object can't get shots on him. And you can see again here, he's pulling up backwards just to get the gun depression he needs to shoot that VK. Not many people would actually think of that. They're just going to go up. Uh, try and get the gun depression, probably poke out too far to get that gun depression because this tank isn't known for great gun depression. So already the enemy have killed two of Zenodium's team. He is now focusing on the easy targets that he can get shots in, which is that FV4202. So he now puts him down to a one shot. The E75 now does poke a little bit forward, enough to get the whole of this 121, and he does get one shot into him. And he does now get a shot from that VK. So he's now lost half of his hit points. Needs to play a little bit more reserved. Doesn't really want to lose any more hit points. And again, as you can see there, he's trying to focus that e, uh, object 140. He knows he's there. He's not just focusing on the tank. And you can see here, he is always looking around. And as he's backing up, he is looking at that 140 to make sure he can't get the shots in. So he's going to poke forward and he's going to aim for the uh, the little hatch again from the VK. Gets one nice shot into him, putting him down to a one shot, and he does now bounce a shot. So he's not just going to he's not going to kill the VK just yet. No, he's not going to bounce a shot. He's not even going to shoot. So he's now reverse side scraping against him. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work. But again, not many people will think of that. Uh, the VK does shoot him, but he does now manage to poke out and get him gone. So it is now four against five. You've got the v, uh, FV over there. That is a one shot. Uh, and you've got the AMX there. You've got the Yag Tiger, Object 74. He does have a nasty bounce. And look at that VK, WZ motherfucker. Yes, he outplayed you, mate. Sit down, go back to the garage and start another battle. Because this is an odium. No battle has finished with if you've got Zenodium on your team. So, and he is going to demonstrate that very soon. So, the FV4202 is now gone, which leaves four against four. Should be straightforward, but that is not the case. Again, things will change very soon. He's now got shots on that object 704, gets one shot into him, uh, and then the object backs up. So, he's now going to try and poke forward to see if he can get the Yag Tiger. Unfortunately, the, uh, the E75 poked forward just as he shot. Now, the Tortoise on his team is now dead. He manages to get a nice bounce uh, onto his turret or his hull. And now he's backing up. So, it is three against four. You've got the AMX there poking down. He managed to get one shot into him. The AMX is going for that E75. And he will manage to kill him. So, this E75 pokes forward. And unfortunately for him, he poked back just as he was shooting a bit too late and Zeno does manage to get a shot into him now putting him down to a one shot so he's going to try and poke forward he's going to try and bait a shot from him and that is exactly what he does so he's going to pull out and he's going to get rid of that E75 but the AMX does kill uh, the E75 
and now that IS-8 is dead and he's going to switch to HE just to clear up that AMX. So it is now Zeno on three kills and he's against the Yag Tiger and the Object 704. Um, he is a one shot so he does need to be careful but this is Zeno we're talking about. He knows exactly what he's doing so he's going to try now, well I was going to say bait a shot but he didn't even need to. I don't know why that object just shot, but Zeno manages to take advantage of that, shoot him once, and now the object 704 thinks he's hidden, but he is not hidden, and he takes him out for his fourth kill, which just leaves a one-shot Yag Tiger. Again, is he going to try and bait the shot? He does, and he does manage to get the bounce, so he's going to poke forward and get rid of that Yag Tiger for the win. So five kills in the one two one very, very nice battle, very well played. I expect nothing less from Zeno, and he does finish on 6.6k damage, 5,000 credits. Uh, Kolobanov, Radley's Top Gun, high caliber, 1,732 XP. So an amazing battle, Zeno. Um, thank you for sharing that with me. And now we're moving on to the last battle, and it is re Ripper for you. Again, one of my good friends, Vlad, and he is in the grill. Now... Usually this map, you go left. Now, he has told the team to go left, but none of them uh, want to know at all, so they all go right. So Vlad sort of sits in the middle here, thinking about what he wants to do. So you can see his team pushing. He doesn't... No one's been spotted yet, so he doesn't want to be sat there if the enemy are all going to push to their left. So he's going to be the one that pushes. He's going to... No one's been spotted yet, so that we assume that no one will be here. So at least he can he can get into a good position for the time that the enemy poke around and start all getting spotted. And if you look at your minimap now, there is still a tank in spawn. And it is a T-54 and he is AFK and he is going to get absolutely wrecked by pretty much all of the enemies. So they are starting to get spotted now. Vlad's just getting into the position that he wants uh, far enough away to not get spotted there goes the t54 he is down so already within just a minute of the of the game they've got one tank less but it is a good thing for that t54 because yes he was afk but now the rest of the team know exactly where most of the red team are so we've got the amx now vlad gets a nice shot into him uh and then we have a few more you've got the grill i hate this staring at the grill just before you reload, uh, he goes into cover. But he does manage to get another shot into that AMX, leaving him on a one shot. And again, shots on that grill there, but not quite reloaded. A nice shot there into the T-54. Nice bit of uh, auto aim. And he does clear him, or one well, doesn't clear him up, but he will get cleared up. And then you've got the AMX 50B there now. So you've got two tanks there. You've got the grill, grill coming. Hasn't quite got a shot on him yet, but he does wait, does take his time, and he does get a nice shot into him. So he still hasn't been spotted. So there is no reason for him to leave this position. So now we've got the waffle. Is he going to get a shot into the waffle? Just reloads, and yes, he does get a nice shot. Well, I think he hit his tracks because he only does sort of 500 damage. So now the E4 is dead, the grill takes out the Death Star, which is one massive tank less to worry about especially being in a grill so it is now five against six still a lot of work to do four against six we've got the t54 now he's a one shot vlad manages to take him out and now he's going to hide behind this building it is now three against five and this building in front of vlad is now vlad's best friend he needs him to protect him and you'll see throughout the battle for the throughout the rest of the battle this house becomes vlad's best friend and the house wins him the game, pretty much, apart from Vlad being OP. But got the grill now there. Unfortunately, he does get a HE shot into him, losing a 1,000 hit points. But he does manage to take out the grill. But it is now two against four. Two grills against the rest. And he's got the AMX there. Can't get a shot into him, but the other grill can. So two against three. The, gr the, en the other grill won't last much longer. And he does die, but Vlad managed to get a nice shot in between them buildings to kill that waffle. So it is now just Vlad against two. It was against three, but he does manage to kill the waffle. And he's, 
he could be a one, not not a one shot to this FV. He does get a nice shot, leaving him on 300 HP. But there is a full HP E100. Now Vlad is a one shot. If the E100 HEs him, he is a one shot. So luckily he didn't lose any hit points against that FV 215B, and he managed to take him out for his fourth kill. So. This is where I say this house is now Vlad's best friend. So he's going to hug this house so fucking tight, he's not going to want to let go. And luckily, the, the grill is quite quick, so and a lot quicker than the E100. The E100 does reverse, and Vlad does make one shot into him, but still a lot of work to do. That's only one shot. He still needs to hit him at least another three times. So... The E100 only needs to hit him once. Guaranteed, the E100 has got the HE loaded because if you haven't got a HE loaded against a grill, then you have no clue. Uh, he does, however, unfortunately miss that shot. That would have been a nice shot. He did have to quick uh, do it quickly because he had to get in to, into cover. And now he's just going to show a little bit too much of his tracks, but luckily it was only his tracks, so it only done 400 damage. But now he is a one-shot to, to anything, to HE, to AP, to anything. Uh, but he does manage to get a shot into that E100. E100 pokes back. Uh, he gets a nice shot into him. And the E100 misses. He's pumping that adrenaline. Who's going to reload first? Vlad or the E100? And Vlad reloads first. So five kills. Great battle. Great Kolobanov. Uh, very nice. Very nice indeed. And... I was quite shocked when I see this damage. It was pretty nice damage. Just shy of 8,000 damage. Literally 7 off 8,000. Gets the mastery. Gets the, the Kolobanov. Gets the lot. And he gets only 1,500 XP. But he was sniping. And that's it guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you all soon.